Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So today we're taking a look at SDF Modeler. SDF Modeler is a beautiful tool from Sasha Road. And this tool is pretty easy for those who are thinking about getting started with modeling or potentially you want to get started with working with SDF tools. It is free, available for both Windows, Linux, and also Mac. Version 0.5 was released sometime this year and a couple other developmental releases has happened after then. And since the last time we talked about this tool, there's a couple of interesting updates that are now available. They've added a brand new spline tool, a linear repetition, which now supports three different acts especially when you're also mirroring. They've also added some 360 camera movement. You can now bring in reference files if you want to work with some snapping. And right now, there's also a whole new look to the overall inspector and the tool itself. And with that said, for those who are thinking about getting this, you can simply go over to the link in the description and download this. And once you download and unzip this, this is basically what you have. This is the whole user interface right here is where you've got your layers, you've got your hierarchy here, your viewport exists here. Your gizmos, all of the gizmos that you like to work with exist right here. And from here is where you've got the inspector. I would like to change this to be a little bit darker, you know, and that looks cool. The overall user interface looks pretty cool, by the way. So how you get to work with this is this easy. This has a couple of layers, which you can definitely go ahead and work with. I'm going to explain the whole thing about these layers later. So by default, if you simply use your middle mouse, you can pan. If you use your right mouse button, you can obey And of course, you can roll in your middle mouse in and out to zoom in and out. Right here where you've got the settings, we sort of missed that earlier, is where you can change what quality of preview you want. And you can also go ahead and play with the environment. So for example, you like to get the environment map in there. When you're doing your rendering, you can turn that on. You can change this if you want. You can play with intensity, do that. And yeah, that is basically how the viewport works. And within the viewport is where all of the things that you get to create will exist. You'd also notice that with this new update, we've got a nice looking view cube, which I kind of like. So first off, if you've got the simple cube, you can click on the plus sign and get another simple cube. And right now you can have them merging together. So you possibly know this whole SDF thing, but how this one works is kind of interesting because if you go over to the inspector section, you can now choose the type of brush that you like to work with. And in this case, we can say we like to work with a curve, we like to work you know, with a sphere and we can throw in that sphere and we can now do things like this. So I think this tool is best for those who are trying to get into SDF modeling or possibly you're trying to just get into modeling or maybe you're just looking for a free, cool, simple to use tool that you can just mix and make cool stuff off. Then of course you can look at that one. So right now we can also go ahead and do some blending. So if we like to blend this in, we can blend that in. And if we would like to do some subtraction we can subtract this out we can turn the whole blend out and you can see that if we hit w e and r which is the standard move rotate and scale you know shortcut keys you can also use that to scale things in move this around and we can do stuff like so so we can also mix and match and get some cool stuff. Right now with a new version, there's a duplicate tool which you can use as well. So I can duplicate that and I can move this around and we can start making some nice looking, you know, cheese stuff. Another thing that you might also notice is the repeat. So with this new version, you can also repeat stuff. So I'm just gonna drag this all the way down and I'm gonna bring this right here, possibly somewhere like that. So if we like to repeat this, maybe we like to repeat this by two, we can do that. And we can just simply move this around and you can see we've got that repeat going. If I choose to scale this in, you would notice that we've got this as subtract and they are repeating. If we also want to do some mirroring, we can of course go ahead and do that same mirroring feature. And the mirroring also has a cool update. So right now, if we choose to mirror, we can now mirror and do some blending so we can do that and different brushes have different ways that these things react to each other. So we can have that done. And you know, you can now start making cool stuff like that. If we just want to keep things the way they are, we can make that happen. And we can of course go in here, have this one selected, bring this right over here, and we can proceed to scale this down. And with this now, you can choose to, you know, change colors, do all of that stuff. Say for example, we have this one there. I would like to change the color. We can of course go ahead and change that color. And that is definitely gonna be the color. But if we would like to use this to do some blending, we can of course blend a little bit inside and you can have it. If for some reason you would like to have this color, but then you don't want it to actually do anything to this brush, what we can do is to have this selected, duplicate that, and we can move this over to a position like so, and we can just simply turn this to paint. And that is going to paint just this part. 
and this painting is not going to be useful if you're going to be exporting this out. It's only going to be useful when you're working right inside of the app. And so I would definitely suggest that if there's anything you want to do in terms of, you know, painting, if you're not looking at rendering finally on this app, then you can just forfeit that part and do that in a different DCC tool. So with this done, we can throw in that ad right there. We can do all of that blending if we want, and you can just simply proceed to get things going. Now, one other major thing I think a lot of you guys may need to know is working with layers. So how these things work is pretty simple. So in this case, we have this one layer. We can click on the plus sign to create another one, or we can simply duplicate this layer. And so once we have this layer duplicated, we can move this layer all the way out. Now, these two layers will not be able to intersect each other because they now exist as individual entities. However, because we now have multiple layers, what we can now do is we can now simply go over to the inspector and we can now play with the rendering settings to get some cool stuff happening. And by the way, for those who are working with this and you're wondering, can we move from autographic to perspective? Yes, you can. So you can do that and you can have something that looks pretty cool like this. So in terms of render and, you know, trying to see what this would look like when you're doing your simple Patrice rendering, you might want to do that within the layer section. Other than this, another cool update that is now available with this has to do with the spline. So they've got a brand new spline tool that is currently available and this is this is pretty nice. I mean, this makes and compensates for the fact that there is no cylinder in terms of the brush. So within the brush section, we've got a few things, but we don't have a cylinder. And how this plan comes in very handy is the fact that you can simply pick this and move it around and you can do a simple plus right here and add another point. So we can have another point there and we can use this to make some very cool stuff. So I can also go ahead and have that plus there, click right here and I can go through and move this to another point. Let's undo that and select this one. And then we can move this to a position like so. And you can just go ahead and make some very nice stylized stuff. So there's a couple of cool things that these can allow you to do, which is pretty dope. So if you're thinking about using the spline to create some very cool, nice looking stuff, by all means, go ahead and do that. And one other thing you would also notice with the spline is once you have it selected and then you switch over to your scaling brush or to your scale tool, you can scale that up and you can scale that down. Another cool update that we seem to have missed is having radial. So right here, we can also do the whole radial symmetry or should I say radial mirroring or duplication. So if we like to increase this, we can do that. So we can create stuff like so. And we can play, you know, with the radius, however we want. We can, of course, go in and just scale this and get something looking pretty cool. And by all means, if you're thinking about doing the mirror across different axes, you can simply go ahead and do all of that right here. So it just makes it pretty easy for anyone who's thinking about working with this tool to get it going. And so for this demo, what we're going to do is to combine all of these things that we've done to create a simple jelly. And for this jelly, what we're going to just do is proceed to, you know, use all of these tools that we've got, go ahead, do some subtraction, and we can also create the base of the jelly holder. And for the jelly, what we're going to use in this case is also going to be a simple brush, but we're going to convert that brush to a polygon. And because we want to make this a little bit more stylized, because this is what we are working with, we're going to do a few things like increasing the round and then increasing the point, playing with the whole star thing, and then we are also going to go in and subtract the base. Now, by default, with this ready, we can go in and make some render testing. So we can play with the parameters that this offers and see what the rendering looks like. However, if you're thinking about exporting this and using it in other DCC tools, say for example, you would like to use this in, you know, Blender, stuff like that, we can proceed to export this as a PLY file. Now, the cool thing with this is once you export this as a PLY file, this offers you two files. So you've got the first one and the second one. So we're going to drag those and drop them into Blender. And from here is where we can start making those colors and adjustments. And this is how easy it is. So if you're a designer or you're looking for simple to use 3D modeling tool, I would kind of call that an SDF modeling tool. You can definitely consider taking a look at this one as it just gives you enough stuff that you can use to start creating your 3D models. And of course, these 3D models, you can definitely export them to other tools and work with them. The idea of SDF is for you to work easily in a much more non-destructive approach and at the same time create cool stuff. And for those that are thinking about topology, of course, they've actually optimized this. However, you might need to do some remeshing if you're 
kind of thinking about working with this in Blender or any other tool and possibly you like to drop the poly counts down. So you might need to consider looking at maybe getting an add-on or you can simply use the remeshing tools that exist with Blender to get that happening. So this is it for those who like to take a look at this or possibly you like to work with it then links to this is going to be in the description so do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend and until I see you guys in the next one. Peace.